the, uh, the president of the Brookfield Open Space Foundation. And we have been doing these uh, lecture series for the last, jeez, uh, Ellie, what have we been doing? Two, three years? And this is like the, the 10th, 11th presentation, two years. And uh, we've had a variety of, uh, you know, variety of presentations over the years, uh, you know, uh, you know, from from the walk in the Appalachian Trail to uh, to we had one on global warming uh, warning last uh, you know a couple months ago, and they they've been well attended. They've been very interesting, and so uh, so kind of you know starting you know for those who don't know, I was also mayor of Broomfield uh, from 2007 to 2013. While I was mayor of Broomfield, uh, uh, Rocky Glass came into the subject because of the Jefferson Parkway and one of the facts that uh, I didn't see in any of the, uh, any of the things I looked at in doing my research is that the Jefferson Parkway, the right of way that goes along Indiana, was all part of the National Refuge Act, which created the refuge. And so, you know, so the right of way from the Jefferson Parkway, was, and so when that came up, it, it was, uh, the parkway became controversial. And one of the times when you learn about moveon.org move and other organizations that uh, that they can literally generate thousands of you know emails you know you know to try to influence decisions at a time. So kind of a little bit of the background, and also I'll make a comment. I grew up in Westminster on 92nd and Stewart Street, and for those who know where that is, it's it's pretty much down with the Rocky Flats. Uh, and I don't know how many people in here know. I can ask names of why people are here. I, I know there's several people, probably some here, which worked at Rocky Flats, and so your experiences, you know, your your, your experiences are personal, and so when. So I'll give you two reasons why I decided to do this. Uh, you know, uh, number, number one, which was a couple years ago, uh, just after I got done being mayor, um, my wife Carlene belongs to a book club, and once a year we do a book. Uh, you know, with, with the husbands participate, and uh, just after I did mayor, uh, mayor, uh, the, the book was uh, was uh, full body burned by Kristen Iverson, and. Uh, and be, you, you know, because when you're mayor, you have a sense of pride that your community is doing everything right. And I'm not saying that Kristen's, you know, right on everything, but I didn't really necessarily want to read the book. I read it. I actually enjoyed the book. I, you know, she covered a lot. There's a gentleman back here said that he was, you know, with the FBI at the time in 1989. And so uh, it, it was a, the conversation we had, it was neighbors, uh, some of which grew up in Colorado, knew about Rocky Flats. And there were some that had moved here that knew nothing about Rocky Flats. And, uh, and one of the gentlemen that uh, that was at the, the dinner that night, uh, he, he made the comment, he called what Rocky Flats was the things we're looking at right now, he called it collateral damage. And so that's what I named my, my talk. Because I'm gonna go I'm gonna go through the history of Rocky Flats and talk about all this stuff from my viewpoint and what I've learned, I've heard, I'm not an expert on anything. I did ask city staff and David Allen is here tonight from the Public Works uh, uh, Brookfield, I think it's safe to say that has led uh, the effort to make sure that there was accountability at the federal uh, you know, level and that the local governments had a lot to say on the cleanup of Rocky Flats. And I'll talk later about the fact that you know, we actually got uh, a, a new water supply uh, you know, uh, you know, a couple decades ago out of it. So, so that's the background. When, so when we've talked about, and a couple members of, the, of our uh, the Open Space Foundation talked about what we could do in presentations, uh, one woman brought up doing a, a presentation on Rocky Flats. And, uh, and people thought it was a good idea when I presented to the board. It was interesting. I mean, because Rocky Flats generates, you know, if you don't know anything about it, it generates, uh, you know, I didn't know it existed. If you know a lot about it, somebody knows somebody that worked at the plant, or, or there's, there's, a, there's a personal tie. But I wanted to kind of do, uh, do a presentation at a very high level about the plant, what I learned about it, what I know, and that's the purpose of tonight. So, and the renewed interest lately has been, and this is where we've had public meetings, is that city council approved, and I presume they did it in their December board meeting, uh, you know, funding for uh, uh, the uh, Rocky Mountain Greenway, you know, and which part, you know, which ends up as connecting Rocky Flats, and uh, and what's again, I'm going back to, I, you know, I've tried to start a community dialogue. It's not meant to advocate one thing or the other. It's doing a dialogue the way I guess I like to see dialogues occur. Okay, so I'm going to start out here, and I was going to, this is actually a film that my daughter helped me get on from uh, YouTube, but I'm not going to show the full deal. More, it looks like most people in this room got involved one way or the other, you know, uh, during the Cold War. And so we, we understand that many of us were around the Cuban Missile Crisis and all sorts of things. And so, so uh, you know, so I, I wanted to show the mushroom cloud, and if I could play it, it would be really impressive. So. <laughs> So I just did some of the brief history because once again, most everybody in this room probably knows about it and stuff. You know, and either doing my research, doing stuff, most of which I knew. Uh, you know, the the Manhattan Project, which was to create a to create a nuclear bomb, uh, started in 1939, just before World War II. 
uh, you know, they developed the first nuclear bomb. My understanding, and once again, I'm sure there's people who know more, uh, was developed at Los Alamos, uh, you know, in, in New Mexico. And my understanding is the first nuclear bomb detonation was called the Trinity Test, which was in New Mexico as well in 1945. We all know that in 1945, in August, uh, the U.S. drops a little boy in Fat Man on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and it, you know, and it does in World War II. I also heard something I didn't research it, that we, we only had two, two nuclear bombs at the time. Uh, you know, we had two at the time, so, and they were, they were both dropped. Um, you know, everybody was, the Soviet Union wanted to enter in fairly quickly, and so in 1949, the Soviet Union tested its first nuclear weapon. And one of the things I made a comment, the reason why I did that is that one of the statistics I heard in looking at, you know, when we started ramping down the salt and, and other, you know, other agreements or reductions, but the 1990, in 1982, we had over 11,000 nuclear warheads. And that wasn't, that's not the delivery system and, and 10,000, you know, and it's safe to say that one or two of the nuclear warheads could end life as we know it. And, uh, and that's the backdrop on which Rocky Flats came about. And I don't know who remembers the, the ducking, because when you think about it, that was one of the silliest things you ever had to do as a kid. I mean, you know, and there was a home, you know, the other things, there was a home, uh, the, the, and I don't know if people remember, it was owned by a, uh, Dr. Bayshore owned the home uh, you know, just above the turnpike, and it was called the Butterfly House, you know, and it, had the, it was a dead of butterfly, and he had a bomb shelter. If you had money, you had bomb shelters, and you kind of, you had food in it, so I mean, the, the, it, was, it was really quite something. I, for those who experience it, remember the, 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 the... So, and I didn't bring it... For those who don't know, I suspect everybody in this room knows that Rocky Flats, and, I, and someone told me yesterday, is what, 5.25 miles from here? The uh, 5.75 miles. Um, so the proximity to Broomfield, it, it, it's close. I mean, it, you know, and, it, and it's over, you know, Rocky Flats is over here, right over here, and Broomfield's here, and as the crow flies, it's 5.75 miles, so it's close. Uh, also, if you, you know, going back to the history of Broomfield, uh, and, I, and I guess I'll cover that, the Atomic Energy Commission uh, in 1951 chose Rocky Flats as a site for their high production atomic bomb facility. It was selected, and what I read was it was selected because uh, they wanted a workforce that was readily available in the metro area, and they didn't want to have to provide housing to them, and Denver was a burgeoning metro area, and, and, and therefore, therefore having it occur here, and like, I always assumed that it was a plumber or a congressman, and they did not know about it. Uh, you know, it was it was it was announced. It was it was a fairly private thing. At least that was my understanding. And I mentioned Kristen Iverson because she'd said something here. Because one of the questions I always had growing up in Westminster is why did they do it downwind? She mentions in her book, and I believe you know there's a certain level of credibility that uh, that when they measured the wind, they measured it from Stapleton, the direction of the winds. And, uh, and that uh, she says in the book that, uh, and for those who live in Colorado, I mean, we have Chinook winds, which blow, you know, pretty west to, to you know, to, to, to the southwest. And so, I, you know, Chinook winds certainly impact Broomfield, you know, more than maybe, uh, you know, or excuse me, Westminster more than Broomfield. And the other part that was really interesting to me is that, uh, that uh, keep in mind, we had two bombs in 1945. In 1957, we had 1,600 workers at the plant. And in 1969, we had 3,500. And it was always my view, and I'll tell a little side story, you know, being the, mayor, being the mayor of Broomfield, that if Broomfield basically was incorporated in 61, but uh, the first filing occurred, and there's some greater historians than me, in the late 50s, I'll say it that way. And so Broomfield Heights was created in the late 50s, and my understanding is there was a fair number of workers from Rocky Flats that lived in Broomfield, you know, that, that was part of the, the people that, that came, and, and, uh, and you know, and, I, and so I was still joke with being a mayor, and they, they came to, it was, Bell Labs was creating a facility at that time as well, as well as uh, Rocky Flats, and that people moved to Broomfield because they didn't want to live in Boulder. I mean, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't want to have Boulder, and, uh, and, uh, and so Broomfield always had this kind of different twin. So, so you know, the fall of Rocky Flats, and uh, and, and once again, there's a, like I said, there's a gentleman over here who says he's from the, uh, he was with the FBI, so he knows this five thousand times more than I do. To every every city. Uh, Memo I looked at on the subject, whether it would have been for Great Western Reservoir, it's for the Rocky Mountain Greenway, uh, or it talks about that you know that uh, you know that there were two major fires at uh, at Rocky Flats, one in Building 771 in September 1957, and one in Building 776 on May 11, 1969. Uh, and I'll make that kind of titular was released to Great Western Reservoir in 1973. 
And I'm quoting the staff memo here because I don't, I don't have a scientific background, but this was one of the staff memos uh, where this is their quotation uh, you know, from last year. Contaminants released included radionuclides, uh, plutonium-239-240, America-241, various iridium acetones, organic salts, metals and nitrates. So it was, and it, and it did, I, it's, it's fair to say that the, uh, that the, these were released outside the, uh, the, the plant unit you know, into uh, uh, areas outside where the, where the buildings and the plant was. Um, I mentioned the FBI raid. I mean, I think everybody here remembers the FBI raid. I think I may have this. Uh, I, I think I may have these out of sequence. Uh, the, but because the, the nuclear weapons production was ceased in 1989, I believe that was prior to the FBI aid, uh, raid, and then the F FBI came in in 1989. And what I understand, uh, and what was, because I didn't write this, was Rockwell the operator at that time? Yes, sir. Okay, Rockwell and, and Rockwell, what I, I read was pleaded guilty to a violation of environmental law and paid the largest fine to date at that point in time. So, so this was pretty serious stuff. The plant, uh, anybody who knows about it knows that the, the plant didn't have, the, there, there were some not necessarily best practices in the management. And so I don't, I've never heard anybody deny that fact. Uh, it's a true statement. Um, the Department of Energy formally announced the closure in 1993. And I make a comment here. I couldn't find what date. Uh, what date would, did we get the, the new water supply? You know, uh, came online in '97. That's what I was thinking, 1997. But what I did see was I saw a slideshow that talked about Brookfield's water supply. And when I moved to Brookfield in '81, uh, Denver water supply was separated. They weren't coming, and I wanted Denver water because you were certainly, uh, you know, aware of the, of the issues out here. But uh, the Great Western Reservoir, and uh, you know, was uh, was uh, replaced as our, our water supply. And we now have water. In fact, we were just talking about the Chimney Hollow uh, project, uh, the, the, the Fermi project up there. But we got in, the, and the, it was out of the 100 million. If I understand correctly, that 100 million came out of the Superfund. Uh, you know, uh, but, but I'm not positive. But anyway, so a lot of personal stuff to Bromfield here. Um, the cleanup began in earnest in 1995, and it, it was uh, closely regulated by the EPA and the Colorado Department of Public Health and, and Environment. Um, and, 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 and the operator at that time, the, the, the organization that's in charge of the cleanup is the Department of Energy. And I, I did, you know, the Atomic Energy Cor Cor uh, Corporation became the Department of Energy. Uh, the cleanup takes 10 years. Uh, the original budget cost was substantially more than that. that, and, that and once again, I'm speaking from my knowledge, it cost $7 billion to finish. Part of why it cost less than what they said was that, that, that they uh, I think they had originally t anticipated a lot of the foundations, which I'll talk about in a second, like, that were are left out at Rocky Flats. Uh, they were they, they were not going to leave in Rocky Flats, uh, but but they really had no choice in the end. Uh, the one thing that I was always aware of is that in 1998, uh, seven local governments, including Broomfield, formed the Rocky Flats Coalition of Local Governments, which later becomes the Stewardship Council, which still exists. Um, and it's my understanding I was never I was never on Ref Clog. Uh, you know, but uh, uh, you know Gary Bros and then uh, Hank Stovall was real big on Ref, Ref Clog and the Stewardship Council. Uh, Brookfield has always had great representation, and so the Ref Clog provided a local presence. You know, during the cleanup on what was going on and what, what was not. Um, and I wanted to get this map first. And once again, I did this all by myself. I'm so proud. You know, I, I wanted to try to get the one off the, the staff map, but. To, to make a comment that there, there are two areas out at Rocky Flats now when we talk about the cleanup. There is a, uh, there is a central op op operable unit, which is, I think you told me yesterday, it was 1,300 acres. And, uh, and, and that area will, is and remains in the uh, Department of Energy jurisdiction, access not allowed. Uh, and then there is, a, uh, there is what's called a per peripheral operable unit, uh, which is part of the National Wildlife Refuge now, which is 4,900 acres. And it's uh, with U.S. Fish and Wildlife. Um, I also did, I wrote down pretty much from a staff map I got, in, you know, the goals of the cleanup, uh, just so people can see, the, you know, the standards that, that they did. And once again, this is not my area of expertise, which is why David Allen is here. But I wrote down uh, a staff, and actually it was, I think it was Shirley that helped draft that, the, the parts of the, uh, you know, this staff memo that I'd gotten in 2012. But, like for example, water leaving the site is a, you know is available for any and all uses. Surface water standard for plutonium is 100 times lower than federal drinking water standard. Uh, you know they demolished buildings, uh, but it, but they did leave foundations, particularly the ones you know below three three feet. 
um, it, which remains an issue as far as monitoring is concerned. Um, our, they wanted to re remediate the soils to the level that support a wildlife refuge because the refuge was always contemplated at that time. At, you know, uh, at Mark Udall and his staff and, and Dave Young, uh, you know, we went with the governor, you know, in, uh, about eight years ago. Uh, Dave Young was a staff guy for Mark Udall when he was in Congress, you know, we're, we're working on this. Uh, and then there was an ind independent verification of clean activities performed by Oak Ridge uh, Institute for Science and Education, which was coordinated with RefClog in the and the cleanup was declared complete in 2007 by DOE, EPA, and the Colorado Department of Health. And do you have any that, that you comment to what I mean? Because uh, it's 10,000 feet. <laughs> okay, Kaiser Hill was the operator, uh, was responsible for conducting risk uh, assessment, including any site remediation. And, uh, and then I, there's another quote from, in addition to the full range of conventional sampling, to see if the cleanup was complete in analysis, the investigation included aerial radiological surveying to locate high concentrations of radionuclide uh, material. Um, and then if you don't.